Hello again, guys. It's Gregolo Productions here, and welcome back to the West Clock Big Ben Style 7 series with our 1963 Style 7 here, which is fully wound and not running. Why the heck is that? Well, because there's no oil on the movement, and these things love oil. Not too much oil, but just enough to get them to go. Let's so take our winding key off here. Well, this isn't even the one that goes with this, but anyway. And you know what? These threads can actually use a little bit of oil. I might just... This actually has a clock that goes with it. I might just dab a little bit of oil in those threads there. And use it to rewind, or put it back in its clock there. Because I don't want any sort of cross-threading or tight spots or whatever. And do the same here. There we go. We don't need much there. All right, where should we oil first? Well, I think right here, the escapement is, is probably the most important part to oil, or at least one of them. Let's get our impulse pin there. I take a dab of oil. Get our impulse pin. And the escape wheel is probably the, well, well the second... What the heck happened here? And with that dab of oil in one spot, our movement has at least started to run I don't know if it'll stop from here, but I'm not sticking around to find out because we're going to keep going with this. So what you want to do now is see the escape wheel here and see how the, the pallet fork, you know, it switches in between teeth. You want to oil every second tooth of that, or of that uh, escape wheel because that's that operation there can hold up the movement if it's not oiled. And that's a... There's friction there, you know, you've got one surface sliding up against another, so we want that process to be as smooth as possible. And I'm going to grab a sharpie here so I can mark down which, where the wheel is at in this. Oh, you know what, there might be a mark on that thing already. Not a mark for, not like an indicator mark, but, yeah, there's a, okay, there's kind of a hole in that, so I'm going to use that. I, I was, what I was going to do was put a green dot there just to show, you know, when the wheel has gone all the way around so I don't oil the same spot multiple times. I'm going to wait for the mark to show up. I know you can't see it. Just take my word for it. Okay, you got a mark there. Oil that tooth. That tooth. I might have to get more oil. Uh, that tooth there. I'm not too happy with how much oil is coming off my oiler right now. If you do two teeth, you know, right next to each other, it's not the end of the world. That's just kind of a reference guide. Every second tooth. I think we need more oil, guys. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't really feel like that's been oiled all that much. There we go. There we go. Here, let's try that again. There we go, we're getting there, and the spot has just come around. Let's see, let's see how it runs now. There is oil on that, so it should do something. And I'm actually going to oil each pin itself, just in case it's not oiled enough. And you can't even see what I'm doing, viewers. Shoot. There you go, you can see at least the one pin get oiled there. We're going to oil our other pin. And people say these movements aren't made to be serviced. Because there's literally all these observation holes to oil stuff. Of course, that would have been needed during assembly. But still, I mean, you know, it's, 
this this is pretty serviceable, you guys. I mean, we, we, we've fully gotten it apart and, you know, put it back together, and we're doing pretty good. Okay. I'm going to stop ranting about people. <laughs> Let's see here. Okay. We're going to oil this pivot now. That's almost microscopic. Going to get a very small amount of oil there. Oil that. This guy here is oiled already. Oil that pivot there. You don't want too much oil. You just want enough. Shoot. I think we... Did we over oil that one? That one? That one's a little worn, that guy there. I think he's okay, though. Not very impressed with the way the clock's running right now, you guys. Oh. Stick it well there. As you can see, a lot of this, like, you know, we're putting very small dabs on the on the pivots here. The oil is just being sucked in to the pivot there. So hopefully these, as the clock starts running, uh, the oil will be drawn into the gear train. It'll soak in more as we're going, kind of, if that makes any sense. I just tried to get that center arbor there. I don't know how successful that was. Oil this wheel here, or oil the spring barrel itself. Or the pivot, sorry. No, oh, we stopped it. As you can see, I'm just jumping around at this point. Oiling this wheel here. I'm going to oil that spring in there, too. Oh. Now I've just got a bit of a hair on my oiler there, I see. Okay. Got oil in here, or try to oil this thing anyway. Whoops. Here we go. There we go. That should be nice and oiled there. That spring. Maybe that was too much. <laughs> well, anyway. Let's see. Where else can I oil stuff? Obviously, on the other side of the clock, we're going to go there next. Okay. I'm also going to oil our alarm mechanism here and it's the same thing we've still we've got another escapement here it's just a different kind don't do that here i'm going to actually see how we're how we can turn our alarm on here and trip it there we go i'm gonna stick a toothpick in here or a q tip or whatever the heck they're called toothpick oh shoot i didn't like that okay i guess i'm gonna have to be stopping and starting it Let's see here. So this is kind of the same principle here with the escape wheel. This is just the alarm escape wheel. And you can see there, this thing was oiled originally. You can see, I, I call them the oil stains, because they're not like, they're not like it's dirt or something. It's just, it's just where you can see that uh, there's a mark there from the old oil that was sitting there. I'm not sure if you remove that. Or maybe that is dirt. I don't know. You can see on the, on the right there, where there was oil in one way or another, whether that be actual dirt or not. I don't think it is, but, because we cleaned this thing, you know, really fairly well. I wasn't scrubbing the escape wheel teeth on the alarm escape wheel super hard, but I know nothing was coming off. Let's 
Okay. We should also oil the other bits of this. Where there's a, a rivet there. Oops. That needs oiling. So that pivots a lot on there. And I don't think I oiled the these guys on this side. Clock's not giving me a bad motion now. It's not amazing, but it's not terrible. There we go. I'm also going to oil the Stopworks wheel here. This is our kind of, I call it the Stopworks timer. This guy here that's slowly turning. Is there a key on the back of this thing? No, there isn't. Okay, I wasn't sure why I was flip-flopping all over the table. All right. See, this thing has a fairly long alarm. And you can see that slowly turning. There's those wheels we installed earlier. This guy here is slowly moving over to the, over to this area here, I believe. And it is going to come to a grinding halt. There's a little observation window there. We can see there's that special tooth going to key in right now. And see, it just blocks up that mechanism there. And keeps the clock from entirely unwinding and just stopping. I'd like to think there was just some guy out there at one point who just tore one of these things open and just like completely just cut this wheel off <laughs> entirely and just defeated the stopworks feature and just had it where the clock just wound down. So it just rang, the alarm rang for like, I don't know, 10 minutes straight, 10, 20 minutes. That'd be funny if I find one of these like that. But of course, that's really annoying because then every time your alarm goes off, unless you stop it, it's going to actually stop the clock. So that's dumb. Oh, boy. All these pivots on this side. I'm trying to think of all my good oiling tips right now. Ah, oh, they put way too much oil on that one pivot. I was doing fairly well until just a minute or two ago. Wow, okay, yeah, my oiling skills are taking a nosedive. All right, well, we'll try that anyway. Uh, yeah, I was hoping for a faster balance wheel motion. So I'm gonna try my old, all my, all the tricks that I know, some of which involve messing with the center arbor, well, I shouldn't say messing with, but just oiling it, you know? Actually, now that I listen to the clock in the background and listen to this clock, they sound fairly similar. Oh, we're starting to speed up a little bit there for then. Not that this clock had some stupid fast motion, but you know, it was, I th it's not doing bad now. I shouldn't say it was, because it's not. Yeah, that's a nice motion on that now. I'm going to test it all night, though. I want to make sure it actually doesn't stop at some point. I want to reassemble a case for this guy and then just find out it's not going to work. And West Clock did rigorous tests in the factory as well. I believe they tested, or maybe that was Smith's. I know they both tested their clocks, but Smith's at least tested theirs for 24 hours. Or maybe that was a time test. I'm not sure now. Yeah, the motion's not bad on this clock, and I've just remembered to oil our alarm on and off switch on all the areas that may need oiling. There we go. I'm going to oil the, also the spring here. I'm going to oil each slot of this. There's a, there's a wire spring on this thing. 
There we go. I wonder if tightening up the pillar nuts wouldn't have any effect on the speed. Because they're just kind of finger tight. They're not really, you know, they're, they're not fully um, as tight as they can be. Let's see here. Obviously, you don't want to, like, make it all, like, stupid tight. Oops. Wow, it just sped up. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, that's not that. Uh, let's hear Let's try this. More like that. And we're going to try it on this side as well. Of course, you don't want to make it, like, you know, when it stops, it stops, right? You don't want to keep going and going and going. Yeah, wow, okay. The the amplitude just picked up as I stopped the movement. Yeah, the the faster the balance wheel swings, the healthier the movement is. So, this movement's not doing half bad. So, that's good we got to it when we did, you know. You don't want to run your car without oil. You don't want to run your clock with old expired oil same with your car all right viewers our movement has been running for well over 24 hours now so i think it's good to go back in the case speaking of which i'm not going to film such a process because i feel like you've seen it all before putting it back together is really simple it's literally the reverse of, of uh, disassembly it's not hard at all one thing I've just done last minute here is made sure that this motion work here is, you know, there's a tiny little drop of oil on our, I believe it's our alarm hand pipe there and our hour pipe. I've just made it just on the inside, just the smallest little drop and any excess I've just wiped off. So just, you know, just to make sure that all runs smoothly and everything, you don't want to really lather it on that area. Mechanical clocks here are aren't really things you lather oil on and of course our washer that was missing from the beginning but you should still have yours is your dial uh i'm, I'm kind of forgetting the name of it your dial uh isolation I, well i guess it isolates these gears here and i've got it on upside down it isolates these gears here from the dial it keeps them from bumping up against it so that is what this washer here does it's crucial to the opera well i don't know if it's crucial but it's important and don't lose it so yeah like i almost did and you know what viewers i'm gonna release uh, i know it's out of focus i'm gonna release an update video on this clock here we are a few days later well actually i should say a few weeks later after a number of tests and even taking the whole thing apart again we have still not had a successful uh well a successful repair and we will talk about that in the next part